Hello, everyone. Welcome back to GameSpot. We are here covering E3 2018. I'm really excited. We are starting our live stage demos here today. Now, the press conferences are all sorted out. I'm Mike Mahardy. I will be here with Lucy James throughout hey. the week. And uh, we've got a full three days ahead of us of uh, some great developers. I'm really excited for this one. Brian Tahar, creative director at Insomniac Games on Spider-Man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Great way to kick off the show. Uh, what better way than Spider-Man? Come on. Exactly. Yeah, what, what was it like showing off that trailer last night? Uh, nervous, uh, panicked, but excited at the same time. We were yeah. pretty pumped. Yeah, you got to show off, what, the Sinister Six toward the end? We, got, we saw yep. Mr. Negative. We saw I mean, Rhino, Electro, Electro Rhino. Scorpion. Yeah. yeah, it's like the so. old school ones that I grew well, up on. People said they want, you know, before the show, like, we hope we see one villain. We're like, eh, one's not enough. Let's just show, you know, three or four more. Yeah, it was awesome. And then I know you're doing uh, hands-on demos as well, right? Yeah, that's by far the more nerve-wracking thing is <laughs> yeah. to actually put the controller in people's hands and um, let them actually play. Because really, very few people have ever played the game till. Last night, yeah. Right so, uh, what did you? What were we? Are we going to be looking at on the demo today? Yeah. So, actually, um, Adam, one of our combat designers, is going to be uh, jumping into what? What do you want to do as fireman? You want to swing around New York City? So, he's actually um, going to be swinging around and doing a bunch of different activities. Awesome. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's been since uh, Spider-Man 2 days, I think. It's been since oh, wow. I really felt like it was... I mean, there were a lot of Spider-Man games, but that's the, uh, yeah. the one that I feel like everybody's always chasing with spider I mean, I think yeah. for most people, that's kind of the, the moment that they became... Um, big Spider-Man video game fans is actually the fulfilling that fantasy of being Spider-Man in, in an open world and you know obviously we're big fans of that game and a lot of the other Spider-Man games and we just want to take what people loved about those games but do it in our way. Yeah. Right. I mean, what's, it, what's it like uh, I mean having to make in it, like a superhero game in general? I mean it's like I said both exhilarating and scary at the same time. I think when we first found out we were going to make Spider-Man your instant reaction is to uh is to fanboy out and go, okay, well, I want to see this villain and I want to do this. And then reality sets in that you have to make a game yeah. on one, arguably the most, one of the most popular characters in the world. And then you start to get really scared. And then you're just trying to figure out, well, what do people love about the character? He's funny. He's relatable. Um, he has a sense of vulnerability. But he's also got these super awesome powers. And yeah. finding the DNA of the character, we're also kind of putting our own twist on it. Awesome. Well, I would love to see some gameplay. I think we're yeah. got people in the back. Are yeah. So Adam's gonna, Adam's gonna start up uh, start up the demo, and cool. uh, you know, of course, first thing you pull the mask down and get an action. Awesome. All right. So obviously, we're looking here. This is Spider-Man over Manhattan, and uh, so walk so, us through this. Yeah. So essentially, um, you know, last night at um, at the Sony press conference, we showed you know one of our main story missions. So obviously, we have our you know a great big story and people will have these big missions, but at the same time, there's a whole other element to the world and that's, you know, obviously playing through, uh, swinging through New York City and finding different activities. So, you know, people always wonder, well, is it an open world? I'm like, yes, it's a very big open world. So actually Adam's taking you over to kind of a, a quick kind of combat tutorial. We want to kind of get people up to speed on the different abilities. So, you know, one thing is, you know, our spider has been doing this for eight years, so he definitely has a sense, a level of mastery with his skills. Um, it's all about him being improvised or using acrobatics, using, using webs, um, using gadgets, and then a lot of environment reaction to let you kind of have a lot of player choice as you're going. So um, Adam makes it look really, really good, and we want it, players to have that sense of, obviously, a pick up and play nature to it, but also, as you get really good, you can do things like we saw in that, um, that raft demo last night. Right. Yeah, what are some places you look for inspiration for combat? I think, I mean, obviously we look at the DNA of the character, right? You know, we want, he's very acrobatic. We want to get him off the ground. Um, we want to use his webs. But then we look, look at, you know, some great action games, you know. Yes, we have played Batman. Everybody, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We would be silly not to play Batman yeah, and look right. at that game because it's a, it's a fantastic franchise. But also looking at things like Devil May Cry. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, any big third party, uh, you know, action game uh, we just look at and uh, look for inspiration. But at the same time, Make, make it our own. You know, one thing is, I actually, it was a GameSpot article I read, and it was um, one of, it was like eight things we want to see in Spider-Man. Yeah. And I remember one of the bullet points being, we want it to feel like an Insomniac game. It was something like that. Yeah. So it was really important to us to deliver on the Spider-Man fantasy, but also deliver on what people expect from a, an Insomniac game. So, sure. you know, you're going to see a lot of gadgets. You're going to see a lot of suit powers, um, suit modifications. 
to add that that tech, that that gadget that not only Spider Man yeah. known for, but so are we. And it was actually an article, you know, not to say because I'm on GameSpot today, <laughs> but it was something I actually sent out to the team going, this is people wanted to be an Insomniac game as much right. as they wanted to be a Spider Man yeah. game. So we really we found that, um, and that's when kind of the game really gelled. It's kind of taking what we love about Spider Man, what we love about the games that we make and bringing them together. I mean, obviously, Traversal was very much inspired by our time with Sunset Overdrive yeah. Yeah. and then adding that. And then same thing with, you know, all the different uh, abilities, uh, gadgets that he can, he, he can craft. Definitely feels it like a game that we've been making. Uh, you know, it feels like, you know, people who are Insomniac fans will also want to give it a chance. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is, uh, the gameplay demo you showed off last year, there were quite a lot of quick time events. Uh, um, recently, no, but like recently in video games, uh, they're adding more accessibility options to yeah. kind of help people who maybe aren't going to be able to hit yep. that every time. Have you got any plans for those? Yeah, we definitely will have accessibility options to make sure that, you know, one is we don't have a ton uh, of QTEs. They're very, very yeah. few and far between, kind of more for some of the some big moments. But yeah, we definitely want player, we want as many people to play as possible, so we will have accessibility options to make things like a quick time super easy or just, you know, self-complete and stuff like that. We'll probably talk more about that in the months to come, but yeah. We want the game to be um, as, as accessible as we can. Right. What are uh, when it comes to choosing from Spider-Man, like what I like about this game already is that we're not going to see Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man. No. Yeah. We're not going to see Uncle Ben dying. Yeah. I, we're getting straight in. He's been doing this for a few years. Yeah. How do you ch how do you then kind of like pick on the choice cuts of like however many dozens of years of Spider-Man. Yeah, so in the very first month of the game of development, we said two things. One, it won't be an origin story, <laughs> and those webs better attach to buildings. Like, <laughs> that was our two bit, uh, right off the bat. I think, you know, it was, we knew obviously we weren't gonna be a movie tie-in. We weren't gonna be, just try, kind of um, take one of the comic storylines, which are great, and just redo them. We said, what? What, it, what fits the character really well? So we looked at DNA, but then we looked at like, what could be a time in his life that would be interesting? You know, um, again, a lot of people have done the origin. You know, the studio side is, has, a, has a 15 year old Peter Parker, which is a great juxtaposition compared to all the other characters, so it fits really well. So, you know, I thought back to my time and my life. Well, when I graduated college, that was a very, very memorable moment. It was the first time I'd be, you know, it was, I was an adult now. I had to pay the bills. I was my first job. Um, that next come of age story, we thought that could be a really interesting time in Peter's life. So that's kind of, we thought that would be a good time. You know, obviously where he works will be a big thing in the game. Um, we just thought that would be a really fun time to explore um, both uh, narratively, but also from a gameplay standpoint of having a long history with some of these villains that you saw last night or interesting new people like Mr. Negative. So just kind of, um, that's my short answer, long answer saying, it's really freaking hard and we have a lot of talented people who are smarter than me to help figure it out. <laughs> I imagine there must be a lot of nerves uh, working. I mean, this goes back to like pre-production when you found out that you were doing Spider-Man. What, what's it like working with a pre-existing franchise as opposed to like Ratchet and Clank, Sunset Overdrive, stuff that Insomnia created in themselves? So the joke I always say is, the greatest thing about working on Spider-Man is that we're working on Spider-Man. And the hardest thing about working on Spider-Man is that Spider-Man, because <laughs> the character is so beloved by everybody. There's so many, yeah. people, like, I never have, I can, it's, you know, you know, with Ratchet Resistance, you gotta have to kind of help, you know, explain it sometimes. You can say, I'm making Spider-Man, and people get it, right? But everybody comes about this character in different ways. You know, for me, it was comics and cartoons, and then it was the movies. Some people, just the movies, right? It's just like, well, I learned about Spider-Man from the same Raimi movies. Mm. So we all kind of have, where do we get in? So everybody has an idea of, well, this is who Peter Parker or Spider-Man is to me. But then you kind of, okay, we're not gonna recreate that version that you have in your head, but what are the common characteristics? It's the relatability, it's the vulnerability, it's the world's colliding, it's the, when Peter fails, Spider-Man succeeds and vice versa. The really strong ties to, to the villains in his life that, you know, they're like Mr. Negative, he owns, he runs Feast, Aunt May works at Feast, you have those worlds colliding. Taking those elements, and that's what we use to make the game. And once you kind of get that, that new, the, the nerves kind of calm down because you know you're making the game in one way or another that people will understand, they'll appreciate, because it represents the DNA of the character that they love. What was it like working in collaboration with Marvel, specifically? Oh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's not really working with them. I mean, I will say, they were, they, their office is about 10 to 15 minutes from where we are in Burbank. Okay. Right. So I just think of them, and this is truthfully, they're just insomniacs who happen to work 15 minutes down the road. You know, Bill, Mike, Eric, um, they're just, they are part of the dev team. You know, yeah. when we, 
very rarely do we talk, you know, obviously we talk about Marvel and the, you know, the lore and the brand, but we actually just talk more about like developers, like are we doing this? Is it good for the story? Is it good for the game? They're just developers just like we are. So it's been super natural. I mean, it's, they, you know, they're obviously really great storytellers and they bring a lot of experience there. Um, and at the same time, just as it's great work in Marvel, having a partner like Sony, it's again, it's been, yeah. it's been fantastic. And it's, to put your it, own I mean, stamp on that. They're just great. I mean, everybody just loves games, loves comics, and it's, it's just a fun partnership. And you get to put your own stamp on a character that like, most of us have grown up with. What is yeah. that like? Yeah, and uh, it's, uh, I, we, you know, we say power and responsibility, right? We feel a lot of responsibility to get the character right. Um, and uh, it's, I will say, this is the most surreal experience working on this game. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm staring at this giant Spider-Man in the background behind Mike's shoulder. And, uh, you know, to see, walking into West Hall today and see Spider-Man in the convention center, it's just, it, career-wise, it's a dream come true for so, myself and so many Insomniac to be working on something so memorable but at the same time, Working in Insomniac, we are independent. We can work on something as amazing as Spider-Man, but then we can also be working on a VR title like Stormland, or also, you know, work, we work on, you know, Ratchet. So we have a lot of flexibility as developers. So we have the best of all worlds. I'm curious, when you look back at old Spider-Man games, I mean, this kind of, again, goes back to the drawing board, but what were some things that you thought that maybe games haven't captured? You mentioned Batman and the Arkham Trilogy. I think that's widely acknowledged as like when video games finally got Batman right. Are you, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you're hoping that's the case with Spider-Man here. I, I, sure ho I sure hope so. I mean, I have a lot less hair on my head than I did before based, <laughs> yeah. on, based on that, that, that worry. So hopefully that was worth it. I think the, um, I think the thing that really what we really want to do is, we obviously want to de deliver the superhero fantasy of swinging around New York City, fighting great supervillains, acrobatic combat. But I think what we really wanted to set out with this game, there's a whole nother, there's, it's a very human story. Mm -hmm. It's, I say it's much of a, much a Peter Parker experience as it is a Spider-Man experience. And I think when you look at the best comics, um, the best, the, especially the movies, these movies resonate because there's a story beyond just them being in the costumes. Right. So we put a lot of time and effort, and which is really hard, of when Peter's not wearing the suit, when he's at work, when he's with MJ, when he's, 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 he's talking to Aunt May about life, um, about life lessons. To us, that's a, it's so not only important to a great story, but also to a Spider-Man, Peter Parker story. So for me, if we can nail that, I think we've done something pretty special. And another thing that's really at the heart of Spider-Man is the humor, like uh, quip after quip after quip. Like, and humor in video games is usually super hit or miss. It's, it's infuriatingly hard. Like, yeah. the, the, we, we, you know, you said pre-production, right? A lot of that was finding the voice of Spider-Man. Um, not only finding, you know, what the humor is like, how often it happens. You know, very early on, he was just like quipping nonstop. And it, it got annoying. <laughs> um, and it's nothing to do with the voice. Our, Yuri, our actor, Spider-Man, is fantastic. And he went, you know, he worked a lot with us, you know, hey, try something different or just what's the frequency? You know, a lot of one thing I noticed a lot is the best things in the comics or the movies is situational humor. Right. It's not just a one off quip that's related to nothing. It's actually writing it specifically for the situation. And our writers, John Paquette, Ben Arfman, Christos Gage, those guys just nailed it. And um, that's something we fine tuned over over the course of development. And now it, it's really I feel really good that we get, we have the voice. I feel like Yuri does a great job performing it, but our writers and our designers do a really good job of finding the right opportunities in the game to deliver it. Right. It, working on Spider-Man so hard, like, why have games taken so long to really, I mean, the game comes out in September, but you just did it well, but what, what was it about Spider-Man made it so difficult? Well, I mean, you think about it, it, first of all, the character is so beloved that the expectations are astronomical. And you're talking to somebody who, I was someone buying those games, whether it's uh, whether it's Spider-Man, Batman, whatever. Yeah. You you have such an attachment to these characters. You want them to be great. I mean, we all go to the Marvel movies. We're like, it better be good. Yeah. I grew up on these characters. They better get it right. And now, being a group that has to get it right is a lot. Um, I think there's so many different facets. It's swinging is so important, right? Yeah. It's yeah. like if you don't nail that, it's like that's you got to get in the door. Just getting in, the, and then it's 
okay, the combat and making me feel acrobatic and making it, you know, right away, feeling like a superhero right away, but having um, a level of mastery and in, in in having that sandbox environment. And then, and then there's the whole story, like you have to be funny right. and he has to have that human story. So there's so many different variables to get it right that right. that's the challenge and that's what keeps me uh, up at night. But luckily we have a very talented team who uh, they, they're nailing it. You mentioned the like level of mastery, and that, that's something very interesting because obviously Spider-Man's been doing this for a while. Uh, straight out of the gate, is he going to have all of his abilities and stuff, or like how are you going to onboard that to new players? So it's, it's great. So right now in the demo, we added some training in the demo, but over the course of the game, we we dull things out. Like so, one thing is we want it. We put you in the action right away. Literally, like the first thing in the game is you get a call, fist tower, get there, and you're hauling butt swinging through New York City. And we, we give you enough to make you feel like a superhero. Right. But then over the course of the game, you'll, you'll, you'll earn XP, you'll get skill points, you'll unlock new skills, new suit mods. And then we kind of dole it over the course of time. So as, you know, by the time you play the first couple hours, you're kind of in the groove. Right. Uh, sorry, I thought I was having a little mic problem. Sort it out. Uh, Lucy, do you want to close this out? Because I think my mic is. Oh, yeah, is your mic going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to have Lucy cut this out. All right, and just as we got to a little cutscene as well. Yeah, so this is actually um, early on in the game. Uh, you run into your old pal Shocker, who is um, who's what else robbing a bank, and uh, you have a, you have a little boss fight with him in this bank. Um, and one thing to point out is like, obviously, uh, not only from the story but also our character designs. We wanted to kind of take, you know, respect to the tradition of the franchise. You know, that's a Shocker, classic colors, but also put our own little twist on it. So Shocker's a good example of that, um, and. Uh, he basically gets really mad that you stop him, and he's decided to just destroy the bank uh, and try to try to take you down. So this is one of the um, early boss fights in the game. You know, one people last year were worried about if we were going to have enough villains, and hopefully last night and this demo will show people that we have plenty of villains in the game. Plenty of villains. Well, Brian, thank you so much for coming down to, to talk to us. Thank um, you for having me. Thank, I can't wait to play Spider-Man. Do you tell everyone when it's out? September 7th. I, I bet it feels so good to say that. <laughs> it does, because for so many times I could not say it. So, yes, it feels really good. <laughs> well, thank you again. And, guys, make sure to stick around. Coming up next, we're going to have Dying Light 2.